All right, guys, we're going to take a break from wristwatches, and we're going to talk about a car watch for a second. This is something I didn't even know existed until recently. I was talking to a, um, a good neighbor I have. We've talked about uh, many things, but he we got on the topic of watches. He, um, he found out I was kind of a watch geek like most of you guys. And so a uh, big, long conversation ensued, and we got to the point where he had one of these. I didn't even know these existed. Um, automatic watches were on a bunch of different cars, but this particular one was from Oldsmobile, which was made by the, you can see on the dial there in that cool print there, M-A-A-R, and it's a it's a Swiss-made movement. You can see down the bottom there it says made in Switzerland. But they put this in certain, I'm not sure what models of the Oldsmobile, in I think 1951 and 1952. I'm gonna put a link in the description to um, an article I found that was, you know, pretty much one of the better ones I've found on the internet so far. And maybe I'll even show you here in a second. But let's take a look at this real quick because I want to talk about a few things on it. Now this, for Oldsmobile at least, it mounted on the steering wheel. So as you would turn the steering wheel, it would actually wind the movement. And this thing is heavy. This weighs over a pound um, for how small it is. I mean, it's it's got to be a couple pounds maybe. I didn't weigh it, but it's it's very heavy. I'm going to show you why. There's a sight glass on the back. There's one on each side. So we're going to take a look at the inside and how they did it. It's really cool. So, But real quick, let's take a look. You can see this thing has patinaed really nice. It has actual blued hour and minute hand and the second hand. You can see it turning down there in the little sub dial. So this thing still works. It's never been serviced. It's never been opened as far as I know. Um, really cool looking design. Honestly, I would like to see this lot layout on a wristwatch. I don't know if something out there is already like this, but I think it's really cool, that uh, that design aspect of it. Um, this little part here, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm, I'm fairly certain this is to adjust the um, speed of it, you know, uh, timekeeping of it. Um, and then this also rotates, okay? And I can hear, I don't know if you hear it, a little bit of clicking when it does that. I don't know if that's winding it or not. I'm not sure what that is. But really that, that red um, indicator on there, you can use it two different ways, as far as I know. Um, and this right here, somebody put this on. This is, somebody made this to mount it somewhere else. It didn't normally come with that. This actually, and it's in the article, it's actually mounted into a bracket just below like the horn. Um, well... The horn actually on those older cars where this was this bar that swung down. So it was actually near that. The horn wasn't in the middle of the steering wheel. But so anyway, the um you could do it a couple different ways. Say you're gonna leave your house or wherever you're leaving, and you wanted to know about how long it took you to get somewhere. So you put that there and then you go, and then you can, you know, figure out that whenever the minute hands over here, say, you know, it took me 20 minutes or whatever um, to get there. Or you could um, set it so like, hey, I, I need to um, be to a place at that time or whatever. And I mean, you could do it either way. You get what I'm saying. Um, and then I guess since I'm still talking on the front, there's a little button right here. And that's actually how you adjust the time. So you push that down and that actually uh, engages like a little um, locking mechanism. So then you can now you can adjust the when you turn the bezel, you can adjust the um minute hand which also rotates the hour hand so that's how you set the time on this guy and everything still works so all right now let's try to get a visual of the inside so i'm going to zoom in here and it's going to be kind of tricky you're going to get a lot of reflections and that kind of stuff and there's you can see some wear on the glass and everything but so if you look inside there i don't want to take this apart uh, i mean i do want to take this apart but i'm not going to take it apart because it's not mine but you can see there's almost like a a pinion in there so the winding mechanism is all the way up towards the front like there's like a little mini clock there that's the actual clock part okay but in order to um, this is all would be like on a watch would be like the rotor assembly okay so and it's it's a heavy cast piece but you can see when you tilt it no matter how you tilt it that piece stays level and what that does is that's your weight 
And so no matter what angle you hit on a road or anything like that, your weight is going to stay f flat in there or level. So that way you get a constant spin on the, that part, which is your would be like your rotor. But you can see it's all pinion out and everything. And then to the natural eye, you can actually you can see the gears even rotate at different speeds and everything. That's all part of the winding of it. So it's that's why I would love to take it apart because then you can really see how it works. But if I can get you. Man, I just, I can't get a super good look in there, but you guys can kind of see it. some of the gearing in there. You, it's really crazy. When you move it around and stuff, that's winding, I think, right there. Yeah, I can, like, hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear it. It is such a cool device. Like if anybody was building a rat rod or something like that or an old vintage car, I mean, you'd have to have these. Now these are only like 100, 150 bucks on eBay in all different conditions. This one's actually considered really good condition. All the parts are there, the crystals, not hor you know, horribly scratched up and everything like that. Um, everything seems to work. And he gave this, or not gave it to me, but he brought it over for me to check it out like uh, yesterday and I played with it for a few minutes and I come down here to do the video and that second hand was still going, so I don't know what the power reserve is on it, but um, it seems to just keep working. So, very, very cool, I think. Uh, hopefully, a few of you guys will appreciate that, too. So, this is that um, website I found on Road, Roadkill on the web. And like I said, I'll put a description in the, the link, and you can see here, like, um, so this would be, like, the uh, picture of it. You can see it there. It's not a very good picture, but you can see it down, mounted right there. Um, and I don't know, so like you, if you look on this picture, you can kind of see that's basically the clock right there. So when we're turning it and everything like that, those are the gears that are actually turning it and uh, making the, the clock or watch work. So I'll put a link uh, to this, like I said, in the description so you guys can look it up and check it out if you want. Um, and then there's the, this is the main one, and then you can click the other ones. But there was... They did them for uh, Chevrolet, Volkswagen. I think Volkswagen was a big one. They did them, you know, where they were more flat. Oldsmobile wanted the cylinder type thing. Somebody's made a couple of videos on them. So pretty cool oddity. So check you on the next vid, guys.